Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. Hi again, and welcome to this week's Explore Tulsa. Now, Stevie, did you see the red supermoon last week? Oh, yeah, and I haven't seen a red moon like that since college. You mean back in 1982 when the last supermoon eclipse occurred? Well, it was 1982, but the red moon belonged to Brad Helwig after he got his frat hazing spankings. Thank you, sir. May I have another? I'm certain that that's a lunar eclipse we were all glad to have missed. Yeah, but boy, could that guy play a harmonica. Wait, that's a little random. It's the only way I could figure out how to transition jokes back to the red moon and our first guest. I tried to get him to moon for us, but he said no. <laughs> now I have even more respect for Mike Peace, his music, and his Route 66 custom harmonicas. I grew up down around Fort Smith. Uh, Muldrow, a little town called Muldrow. Sing in church, took voice lessons when we were kids, my brother and I, little kids, but then we got to be, uh, you know, junior high, we were too cool to have take music lessons. We wanted to play sports, you know. And I didn't really get back into it. I'd always kept an interest in it till uh, after college and in the Army, I had a lot of free time and one of my buddies in the Army was a guitar player and taught me some chords and I, you know, thought I wanted to be Bob Dylan. So I got me a, a rack and harmonica and you know, I wanted to be a folk singer or something, I don't know. In, in the 90s, mid-90s, we put together a classic rock blues band and uh, there was two guitar players already in it that were a lot better than me. So I said, well, I better start concentrating on harmonica. And uh, so I kind of became the singer harmonica player. It wasn't, it wasn't really designed to be a lead instrument like a, like a electric guitar or whatever, or a guitar. Because your, your first three notes on there, the, the blow or is, a, is the chord. It's an F chord. When you draw it, That's the G chord. So, that, so it, it was originally designed to, to, to play a, a chord. That's what it was designed for. But then, I don't know who started it. The old blues guys, I think, started it where they played, made it a, a lead instrument. Or, uh, and, you, and you can play melodies like. <laughs> Rock and Robin, you know. So you, it, it became a, it's a real versatile instrument once you learn how to bend the notes. Whether I'm a professional or whether I'm a, a weekend guy or whether I'm just Joe Blow that plays at home, uh, eventually, eventually those reeds will have metal fatigue, the ones you work the hardest, especially the ones you bend, and they'll be, they will go flat. It's like a guitar string, after so many vibrations, it goes flat. And you need to change them out. Because if I was trying to play something like this, and that, and that one reed went out, what am I gonna do with it? You know, I can't just play that and then skip it. It's just not that easy to do. Because you, you only have 10 holes, 20, 20 basic notes, plus all the bends. And then I started, you know, blowing out harmonicas, and it got it could be expensive. Figured out that you, uh, that my buddy Jimmy Gordon up in Vermont that built custom harmonicas, and uh, taught me a lot of stuff and uh, about repairing my own, and it just kind of evolved from there. Most of the guys have a closet full or a shoebox full, 
So for less than half the price, or third the price, I'll fix it and I'll go through and I'll clean it, I'll tune it, retune it, and make it play as good as new. I'll put a new reed in it, or reeds, however many, and I can, a guy's basically got uh, a new harp for all practical purposes.